Hey guys, I'm back today and today I'm sharing with you my entire health journey, my carnivore journey and how I arrived here today eating the way that I do. I used to make a lot of content around food and healing and autoimmune back in the day and um, I miss that. So I want to start talking about some of those uh, topics again and bring that on. So first and foremost, I want to start with a disclaimer. I am not a doctor or a nutritionist or a dietitian or any of those things. And also I don't really have an agenda for how you eat. I really don't care how other people eat. In fact, I don't even tell my family how to eat. Uh, I tend to lead by example. So I'm just here sharing my journey and uh, do with it what you uh, want to. I'm going to have to get rid of my gum again. You know the drill. I always like start the video and then realize I have gum in my mouth. Okay, so um, stage one, I have broken this down in my entire journey. And so I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a background. So when I was um, like a, a teenager, I want to say about 15, 16 years old, I started seeing these like really weird uh, black patches on my back and also I was like losing hair really really bad. I mean literally my mom used to joke that we can go into like a wig business just using the hair that Mina's losing and none of these things were alarming to my family because I come from a long history, family history of female hair loss on my mom's side of the family. So it was just like, oh, it runs in the family kind of a thing. My mom did take me to the dermatologist for my back and they basically just gave me like some kind of a cream, which didn't seem to help. As I got a little bit older, I would say like 17, 18, 19, I started having these like really unexplained symptoms. I would get really bad joint pain, especially knee pain. I would have extreme panic attacks. Um, some of the other things, again, I still had the rash in my back. I still had um, hair loss and I would get these like heart murmur kind of things, heart palpitations, I think they're called. And again, um, my mom would take me to the doctor and some of these things would just get written off. Um, I think especially because I was having the panic attacks, it was kind of like, oh, it's all in our head kind of thing. With the joint pain, there was family history. So that got written off. I was like, oh, you know, like everyone in my mom's side of the family has like knee pain and joint pain. So it was just kind of uh, sweeped under the rug. When I became an adult, um, 21 in my early 20s the symptoms got worse i was also under a lot of stress just uh you guys know i got married very young had my first son then went through a divorce i was running a full-time real estate business in school full-time and so when i would go to the doctor with like digestive issues those damn rashes hair loss panic attacks it would just be written off as like oh well you're going through so much there is a lot of stress in your life and i could never find any answers in fact I I felt like people around me were looking at me like I'm a hypochondriac so um, it was it was just something I had to just like chalk it up and like just deal with so fast forward 2008 I get remarried I got married to my my now husband Irfan and for the first time in my life we by the way I got married and then I moved to a different state with my husband so um, I'm in that state and for the first time in my life I had like a little bit room to breathe where my schedule isn't like crazy and I'm not like a single mom and dealing with everything by myself. But at this time, as many of you guys know, my mom was dealing with stage four cancer and she was literally like dying in front of my eyes, right? So um, I got pregnant with my second son and when I was eight months pregnant with him, my mom passed away. I don't know if it was like the stress of the pregnancy plus the stress of like grief, but my symptoms came forth like full force. Like I started losing like globs of hair, the, the spots in the back got worse, joint pain, oh my God. Like I literally was 30 years old at this time in my life and felt like I was 90. Like every single joint in my body hurt. Every single day I would wake up and feel like I got hit by a train. Like I was just sick all the time. I was lethargic. I had digestive issues. So in 2000, in early 2012, like I think it was like 
December 29, 2011, actually, we moved to Houston, Texas. And as I like to say, Houston, Texas has been so lucky for me. So we moved to Houston and I'm experiencing a lot of, so I had my son in 2010 and that's when my mom passed away. So 18 months later, uh, we moved to Houston, Texas. When I moved here, again, the symptoms are just really horrible. I start having, uh, I already had the knee pain, but I started having wrist pain and like joint pain in my finger is really bad. And I told my husband about it and he's like, maybe you have carpal tunnel. tunnel. And I'm thinking, I'm a stay at home mom. Like why would I have carpal tunnel, right? But I just had all of these unexplained uh, symptoms. So he's like, well, we're, you're going to go to a new doctor here and maybe, you know, you'll get different, like a different answer. So at this time I'm experiencing extreme fatigue. My, my, my oldest one was like, um, he was in first grade. So it was like six and a half. And my younger one, my middle son at the time was 18 months old and he loves to be like carried and cuddle and I could barely lift him up, like barely. And also this new house that we had, our previous house, has stairs in it. There's a second floor. It's not like a, um, a ranch house like the one we had before. And I could like barely go up and down the stairs. And mind you, I'm like 30. Uh, uh, 31 at this time about to be 32 later this year in 2012 so i'm like why am i an old lady like why can't i function why can't i pick up my baby like what is going what is happening to me so i went to the doctor no answers in houston other i went to a chiropractor i used to have extreme back pain oh my god and also i forgot to mention one other symptom i had was my right shoulder would hurt so bad you guys know I, i'm a handbag girl and i had to like downsize my my louis vuittons okay like i could barely like carry my bags my shoulder would just hurt all the time so finally in like march in 2012 i go to i think this was like my second or third massage therapist i go to this massage therapist and she she looks at my back and she's about getting ready to massage me and she goes what are these spots on your back so i told her i don't know i've had them since i was a teenager I've been to so many like dermatologists, doctors, they can't explain this along with a whole host of other symptoms that I have. And she's like, well, what kind of symptoms? So I told her the symptoms and she said, you know what? Try cutting out gluten. And I said, what's gluten? Like I had never heard of this term. So she's like, you need to be on a gluten-free diet. So anyways, I go home and I start like researching. I didn't even know like what has gluten in it. And I start researching. And so immediately that day, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to just cut out gluten and see if that helps. I cut out gluten and by the third day, like literally the third day, I can lift my son again, like my 18 month old son. I can go up and down the stairs so i'm like oh my god like this is amazing right and so i'm like super excited by like a one week like i have more energy i'm no longer having digestive issues so this is when my gluten-free era began so about a month after i went gluten-free i had scheduled to see a specialist for my joint pain and because like it had only been a month where the joint pain went away my husband was like let's just, just keep the appointment and just go and like go and see the doctor and and just just in case it comes back so i go to the doctor and that's the day a month into my gluten-free journey i actually got diagnosed with um with rheumatoid arthritis they like did a whole bunch of tests on me and they're like you have ra and i'm like i thought arthritis is for old people and they're like no it's an autoimmune disease i had never in my entire life heard of this and so um the doctor called one of her friends who was a rheumatoid like a specialist in ra or something i, I forget the word for it but and he was he she told her told him a little bit about my symptoms and my diagnosis and he said for that in order to run more tests i was going to have to go back on gluten and because uh like being gluten free was actually like healing it, it had healed me enough that they couldn't see the full results 
So I was like, well, what happens if I go off of gluten? And they're like, and like my symptoms come back. They're like, well, we'll run more tests. And I'm like, but my symptoms went away going gluten free. Like it didn't make sense to me. And so she's like, you're going to have to be on this medication. And I'm like, I don't want to be on a medication. And you know, nothing like wrong with people being on medication like ra is a very serious disease like i totally get it if people want to be on medication but because i literally 18 months ago had lo lost my mother and i had seen like what the symptoms had been of her like being on chemo and medications and and already 30 days into this gluten-free diet, my joint pain had, pain had completely gone away by this point. So I refused the medication. I refused the additional testing. And I'm like, I'm just happy that I have answers. And I'm happy that I actually have something I can do about it. So I go home and that day I just committed to going all in into learning about nutrition by this time 30 days in i was already like researching a lot about gluten free and i went like all in so basically because i was a stay-at-home mom you know my only responsibilities were taking care of the home cooking cleaning taking care of the kids so i would spend like eight hours a day listening to podcasts youtube channels interviews reading books on like everything related to nutrition and i did that for eight years straight <laughs> like i have like you could call it like a phd in nutrition by this point so i would like i would be cooking and i would be like listening to uh, a book i would be you know uh, cleaning my house and i would be playing a youtube video on nutrition and this is when i discovered the all the wheat the wheat free books the uh wheat belly diet the grain free books so that was like the first era, uh, gluten-free. What happened um, when I went gluten-free is my hair stopped falling out. I no longer had joint pain. I lost a ton of weight. I was like glowing from within. Like if you guys go back and look at those videos, this is going to be year 2012, 2013. My skin is glowing. My hair is bouncing back those rashes completely go away my shoulder pain is better i still had some like neck pain and back pain that would like flare up but it's not like at the extent that i have to like go to the chiropractor all the time and get a ton of massages so like i, I have more energy than i've ever had so i did this for about two years where i was about just gluten-free at this time in 2012 13 and 14 you couldn't really get a whole bunch of gluten-free products. There were some available, but they literally tasted like cardboard. They were awful. In 2014, I went completely grain-free. As I was doing research, I discovered that... Actually, no, before... Let me stop for a second. In 2000, early 2014 and maybe late 2013, I discovered some gluten-free products like breads and pastas and things that were like they didn't taste that great but they weren't like absolutely like nasty either they were like good enough where you got a little kick out of like yeah i get to have bread too or i get to have pasta and around this time i noticed that like some of my digestive issues and some of like the fatigue started creeping a little bit back in so in 2014, I discovered the grain-free diet and I found out that, I think this was the time that Dr. William Davis, who was the author of the Wheat, uh, Wheat Belly books and who actually personally for free mentored me, like he was so amazing. I would message him on Facebook and like, can I eat this? Can, is this okay? I would send him labels and he would literally reply back, like a famous author and doctor like that, like forever grateful. This is when... He went from talking just about like cutting out wheat and gluten to like talking more about grain free. And this is the time that I discovered more like the the grain free brain, I think, like books like that. So I'm like, oh, my God, I'm eating all this junk processed foods. And that's why some of my like digestive symptoms and my fatigue is coming from uh, back. 
And so I cut off all of those like gluten-free processed foods and stuff and kept them as like occasional like cheat days. But I stopped eating them like every single day and I went completely grain-free. That's um that's the year that I actually also was pregnant and had uh or 2013 I was pregnant. I had Alina. So I was like pretty much grain free for most of my pregnancy um, when I was pregnant with Alina. And luckily with that pregnancy, I didn't gain as much weight as the other ones and didn't get gestational diabetes as with my other pregnancies and a whole host of other issues that I had with them. So being like on this diet really helped me. After I had Alina, I think it was after I, I tried the vegan diet for a few months and the reason I, no, i'm sorry not vegan vegetarian and the reason that i tried it is because i was listening to a lot of content on uh, nutrition and food and i was reading a lot of books and i like to read both sides of the story so i also read some books and listened to some talks and things like that from like vegan and vegetarian doctors who promote that lifestyle so i uh went uh vegetarian for about three months um i was almost hospitalized that was probably the worst uh health that i've ever been in was during that time that i went um tried like no be uh, no meat basically so i i quit that came back and when i came back i tried off like more of like the paleo lifestyle for a little bit but again paleo like you're not like so conscious of carbs and you're not like very careful like there's certain things that paleo community eats that i couldn't eat so after that i went back on like the grain free keto lifestyle now we're in like 2015 to 2017 this was the most healthiest time in my life um i was eating very clean like super clean like reading like nothing with labels on it just like um basically vegetables and meat like that was like most of my diet and i was fit i was radiant i was toned like I just was at my best. Like even when I look at pictures from that era, I'm like, girl, like I was just like living my best life. After that, I discovered carnivore. And how I discovered carnivore is like, I was like already kind of eating that way because I was just eating mainly just like meat and like seafood and vegetables. And then slowly, like the content around carnivore diet started showing up on YouTube. And I'm like, Oh, well, I'm kind of already eating that way. And I started cutting out like sort of more vegetables. And I was doing these green smoothies during my health journey, which really, really helped me. Thank God for those. But at this time, I started cutting those out as well. Like I was kind of like over it and let go of that again best time of my life and then the pandemic hit this is where it all went down south for me really quickly so during the pandemic we were all at home my husband's working from home you know uh and so the kids are being homeschooled and to entertain myself my husband and i are already big foodies like we love eating we love eating out and our big entertainment which already is food became even more food and my husband started cooking all of these amazing dishes and we started door dashing a lot more and we're just and slowly i don't know if it was like a coping mechanism of the pair uh the pandemic but i started like eating and introducing a few more carbs and a few more carbs went into a few more carbs so i wasn't eating gluten or like like anything like that like i didn't like go back but i started eating pretty much a higher carb diet and during this time if you even watch videos from like during the pandemic era i started gaining weight i'm puffy as hell i'm bloated like i just started just like i, I think i put on 10 pounds during this time i started feeling tired and lethargic and just kind of like ick you know like uh like what's happening i'm still eating gluten-free luckily my ra isn't back nothing like came back like that but i'm just tired uh fatigued have um digestive issues again uh and just not feeling my best so right when the pandemic ended i think it was like 20 january 1st on 2022 I recommitted. I'm like, I can't freaking do this anymore. Like I'm going back to 
keto slash carnivore and I need to like get myself in ketosis like right, right away. I had luckily been fat adapted where I can like switch back and forth to burning carbs versus burning fat. So within a couple of weeks, all I started doing is like January 1st, 2022, I'm like just eating meat, nothing else, only meat, beef, which I love, like I do the best on beef, like my beauty just 10Xs itself on beef. Like I personally just feel like I look my best, I feel my best when I'm eating like mostly beef. So I go back to just like beef, chicken and seafood, like no vegetables, nothing else, like just clean eating for a few weeks and all of a sudden, my the puffiness and my face is gone my i lose the 10 pounds and you can go back and check those videos and everyone in the comments is like what just happened to you like how did you do this like you were a completely new person also on january 1st i quit caffeine for the first time in my life so i quit caffeine and went back on my diet and all of a sudden the weight just like flies off the 10 pounds are gone my skin is radiant again digestive issues gone and so everything's like back to normal, okay? And then in uh, after that, what happened was I'm back on the diet. I'm feeling great. Everything's good. And then we had a huge lifestyle inflation moment, okay? You guys know this. I started um, now like the world is open again. I started hosting my in-person intensives. I'm flying to Hawaii and then I'm flying here and then I'm doing this and then I... Uh, in June, we moved into this mansion and then we are in a new neighborhood with exciting new restaurants. And all of a sudden, again, it's like, well, you know, we're on vacation. Let's have a few more carbs. Oh, but we're trying out this new restaurant. I'm just going to have a few carbs just today. And so all of a sudden, when I moved into this house, the I'm still eating like keto and like carnivore, but like I'm introducing way too many cheat days there's like way too many carbs happening and again the scale starts moving up okay again i'm bloated again like some of the puffiness comes back and i'm like damn it like right and so up until about 18 months into like moving into it's been 18 months since we moved into this house i kind of did like um I'm just going to live it up. And my living it up was still gluten-free. It was still like keto carnivore, I would say about 80% of the time. And then like the 20% of the times, the carbs would come. And when the carbs would come, the digestive issues, the lethargy, like the fatigue, you know, all of that stuff and the puffiness would come back. So uh, it has been 19 days today where I have completely, I'm like, you know what? I can't do this yo-yo. I'm going back to completely being carnivore, like full on carnivore again. And so this is kind of, this is me kind of like calling myself out and like doing a full reset. So this has been a 12 year journey for me. And for these 12 years, I have been gluten-free i have been mostly like paleo slash keto slash like carnivore however there's been pockets where i messed up so the pandemic is where i introduced carbs again and i had issues again luckily ra never in this whole 12 year journey i only had ra come back like once or two times where my like symptoms would return one was when i went vegan or vegetarian and one i had a random episode i think in like 2018 2019 where my um like it was my fingers just kind of like just looked deformed and it was really really bad so i've only had like two instances where i had a flare-up but other than that like this diet has like lifestyle has been the key and i feel like for someone who's been on this lifestyle for 12 years like messing up just like at two points in your life is not that bad like think about how many diets people try and like can't keep up with them right so i feel like this has been my secret to health this lifestyle it's been my secret to my youth my secret to my beauty and like i um i'm just like ready to recommit to being at it a hundred percent i think what screwed me over after since the pandemic was trying to do the 80 20. i think I just don't feel good on the 80-20. I think even doing like 95-5 would be better. 
but like 80 20 like doing this diet in moderation has basically not worked for me it i was in like when i was even researching or not researching sorry journaling on why was 2015 to 2017 the best in my health journey why did i look the best feel the best and what i figured in my journal journal was because i was a hundred percent in it wasn't like oh sometimes like i'll have carbs it was like no i was a hardcore mina i was like super athlete mode all the time and i think when i started switching into like um athlete mode versus like maintenance mode which i've talked about in in my courses and even on my channel i think I'm the kind of person that does best when I stick in, stay in athlete mode. <laughs> so it has been 19 days today that I've like completely recommitted to being carnivore all the time. Not just like, okay, I'll just cheat at this restaurant with some carbs. Like, no, no cheating, like just 19 days all the way in. And I just wanted to kind of make this video to showcase my entire journey, but also like keep myself accountable and also like have this as like already just 19 days again in i feel like all the puffiness in my face is gone like i feel good i look good i'm energetic again so girl yes we're we're sticking we're sticking to athlete mode like all the time so um what else do i want to talk about a, a year after i had alina so 2015 is when I did introduce fitness and I'll do a separate video about that. Um, but I feel like when I'm on carnivore, like it's just easier to put on muscle and I have like, I can work out a lot less and get like a lot better results. I also feel like when I'm fully on carnivore, my body recomps itself so eat let like for me i will start losing like a pound a day when i first go back onto carnivore especially when i've been off for a couple of weeks and i've been eating more carbs and for me carbs are like when i'll have like uh potato chips french fries i'll have rice like that's like those are my guilty pleasures those are the things that like will get me in trouble like i cannot like eat potato chips and french fries and like rice and like and and be like i will start ballooning up feeling so lethargic like i'm very sensitive to carbs so i'm also a very tiny person so even like a small amount will just like i will literally go into a carb coma my dad was like that too oh my god we would go to the restaurants with my dad and he would eat carbs and literally pass out like people like the manager would come up and like ask us if we needed to call 911 like that's how he would pass and my mom would be like nope he just gets like that after carbs he'll be okay so i definitely got that from him i i'll have like a little bit of rice and have to like sleep like pass out sleep for five hours like my family can't even wake me up it's kind of scary so yes so um that's like i'm now 19 days in, totally 100% um, carnivore, only eating beef and chicken, mostly beef, but beef, chicken, and seafood is what I just thrive on. And it, when I come back on after being more carb heavy, I'll start losing a pound a day for like two weeks, and then I'll, or like a week, and then I'll move to like a pound every three or four days. And then I'll move to a pound a week until I like settle on what my body wants me to be at, which is usually around 107, 108 is where I'll just like plateau and like just stay there. But even when I plateau at 108 pounds, what I notice is that my body recomps itself. So I will start losing um like weight from like my thighs and my tummy and my arms and my face and like my boobs will get bigger and my butt will get bigger so like i'll have more of like a womanly shape where it like goes to the right parts of the body and i thought this was just me and there's other female carnivores talking about this where they like gained a whole like cup size on carnivore and their body just recomped and i like their stories because none of them were working out because i was working out when i discovered carnivore so you could say well mina maybe it's just your workout i went up an entire uh bra size since i started doing carnivore and i like have 
like hips and a butt now. So it completely recomps you, your whole body into a more womanly shape. And so um, those damn carbs and the pandemic got me, but I am 100% back on. And even when I wasn't 100%, I was still 80% eating carnivore and keto. I was just introducing way too many carbs that was just weigh weighing me down and making me lethargic and making me so puffy and just gross feeling. Now, there are a lot of carnivores that didn't have any loose skin from their weight loss, like their body just ate it up. There's carnivores that have lost 100 weight, 100 pounds, 150 pounds, and their loose skin, their body just reconsumed. That has not been my experience. So I lost um, a lot of weight. I had gained a lot of weight when I was pregnant with my first baby that was 19 years ago now. And I lost that weight fairly quickly after having him. And then I had a whole bunch of like, I had the mommy pouch and it was just like this much loose skin. And when I started working out after having Alina, I had abs. Like I literally had ab lines. I have pictures with ab lines. And then underneath I had like just loose skin and I had found like love and happiness in my body like that's been a whole journey for me I think it was after I had Alina I realized that I had to learn to love my body even with the loose skin and I was fit everywhere else like you guys remember how I looked back then right I have a ton of like pictures even on I don't know if I posted on Instagram back then because my Instagram is newer but I have a ton of pictures of me just looking like ripped and like amazing after having three kids but I still had that loose skin so I oh I did a lot of inner work I'm an inner work teacher so obviously duh and I started loving my body and feeling amazing in my body and just had made peace with my loose skin with the thought in the back of my mind that maybe like a lot of these other carnivores, maybe my body will eventually eat that loose skin. For me, it never did. And the more carnivore videos I watched, I learned that some people on the carnivore diet just and who are intermittent fasting as well, which I was doing too, their body re like it um it consumes the loose skin mine i would get like flat and have abs but my body just would never eat up that skin and as more and more doctors made started making content on carnivore diet they started saying that a part of it is just genetics that some people will not have any loose skin like their body will eat it up and some people will just won't so seven weeks ago i just decided to get lipo in my tummy area and get all of that loose skin done and i couldn't be happier with my decision like i wish i ha would have just done it sooner like i gave it a good 19 years but i just made that right decision for me and there are other carnivores that also have chosen that path after trying for years to consume they get rid of the loose skin kelly hogan is one that sh her she i think lost over 100 pounds on the carnivore diet and has no loose skin like none she just has like perfect abs and she said it took her i think about four years for her body to eat up the skin but for me it just never did so she's lucky but for me i just chose the lipo and um uh what's it called the it's called a mini tummy tuck where they, so they didn't have to rebuild my muscles or anything because I can work out and get, get like, like my muscles are good. They didn't like give me a new fake belly button. They didn't have to sew me up on a muscle level. They just, it's just a skin level. They just cut off the skin and just sew it back. So I'm very happy with that decision. And that is my entire 12 year health and, um, sort of like carnivore journey it, it's you know it's been a it's been a journey i think uh like with anything else i will say that my, where i am now 12 years later is i'm 43 i'm gonna be 44 later this year i feel energetic i feel like i look amazing i feel amazing i feel really great in my body when i'm eating 100 percent carnivore my energy is just through the roof um, when I introduce carbs, it gets a little tricky for me. So I'm planning on not introducing carbs and just like doing it 100%. I did for all of those years straight through 
and I can do it again. That's the plan. And um, no more rashes, no more hair loss, no more RA symptoms. Um, no, my back pain is completely gone. I no longer have neck pain. That shoulder pain has gone many years ago. I haven't had like panic attacks, heart murmurs, anxiety, uh, any of those things, like all of that gone. Now, of course, during this time, I was also doing a ton of inner work. Like I like to attack things from all angles. Like I'm not someone that will like half-ass things. Like I'm not gonna like just do the diet and like not do the fitness and not do the inner work or like only do the inner work and like not change my diet. Like I wanna just live my best life. I do not wanna end up like my mom's side of the family that are just everyone, like most people on my mom's side of the family, they're just obese. Like that's just, it is just the way it is. Everyone's obese, everyone has joint pain, everyone has hair loss issues. Like there's just so many issues. People's lives are very short on my mom's side. On my dad's side of the family, everyone's slim. Everyone lives like really long life and they don't like, and it's so interesting because my mom's side of the family, like everyone's a foodie. They love to eat. My dad's side of the family, they're more like you eat to live, what it, right? Eat to live, live to eat. Yeah. And they're just like, they don't eat as much. They're like mindful about what, I don't know. They're just healthier. So I know I have both genome. Like I have, um, even when I had my DNA testing and my gut microbiome tested, what I discovered is that I have the, it's called the centenarian DNA and the gut microbiome. And what that means is that my gut microbiome and my DNA says that I have the ability to live to 100 years. And I'm like, yeah, because my dad's side of the family, like everyone's healthy. Like my, you know, unless there's God forbid an accident or someone, like everyone lives a very long life, right? Even my dad, he started smoking when he was 11 and smoked three packs of cigarettes every single day. And he even outlived my mom, like lived like decades longer. He died at 71, but again, he wasn't a healthy guy. So, cause he was smoking like literally three packs a day. And even he lived up to like 71, right? But everyone in his family that like is healthy, like lives a healthy lifestyle, has a long life. So I'm like, okay, my DNA shows that, my gut microbiome shows that, you know, what are you doing? Like, I wanna be here for my grandchildren and my great grandchildren and I'm gonna try my best, right? So, um, you know, I have been just, when I'm on the diet 100% and even when I'm not, here's the truth, even when I'm like vacationing and like eating out and eating more carbs, my RA doesn't come back. My, I don't lose hair, my neck pain, my back pain, my shoulder pain, my anxiety, my panic attacks, and my heart, uh, like none of that comes back. So even when I've been doing this diet, kind of like at 80% capacity, I'm still like at my healthiest. And even like my doctor, uh, I have a new doctor now, so this is very interesting. In my old neighborhood, I had the same doctor for like many years. And every year I would go for my well woman exam and she would say, Mina, you are my healthiest patient. And she would spend like 30 minutes. Like, you know, doctors barely spend time with you. She would st spend 30 minutes with me just asking me a whole bunch of questions. She's like, I, I, she's like, I want to know what you're doing for me. And I want to know so I can tell my other patients. And she would tell me every year, you are my healthiest patient. You're my healthiest patient. So now I have a new doctor here and this doctor's office has two female doctors and, and so they both see you when you go in. And when I went in, both of them were like, you're our healthiest patient. My blood work, like everything just comes back like top notch, even when I'm just eating this diet at 80%. So even when I'm not doing this correctly, it has been a game changer. When I'm eating it at 100%, I'm superhuman. Like I'm literally superhuman. Like watch out world. So 19 days I'm eating it 100% and I feel fabulous. So that is my journey. I hope you enjoyed this video. One thing I will say is that if you want to hear me talking about this when I was really, really in it, like when I was like trying all the things and really like eating clean, like, you know, doing all of those things, I have this course, it's inside, it comes as a bonus inside of the self-aware activate, 
the self-aware Barbie activated course bundle, but you can also purchase it separately. That like details my entire journey. In fact, it's probably more like 100% accurate in there because I filmed it like right as I was like, like not in it, in it, but like I had all, I didn't have the courses when I was like in it, in it, but like right as I was like eating that way. So it was like more accurate now i'm going back and telling you a story from like 12 years right so if you want to know exactly what books i was reading what i was eating how how i was juicing all of that stuff that's a great resource for you i just wanted to kind of update you on like where i am at now so when i've been at my worst during this during the pandemic and then this lifestyle inflation from for us it's been um kind of 80% on game and 20% not so much. So even then, none of my symptoms came back aside from digestive issues, bloating, and lethargy. Like I get really fatigued. So that definitely comes back with carbs, but nothing else has like comes back. But when I'm eating 100%, girl, I'm just my best self. So 19 days in, I'm gonna keep updating you guys and I'm doing this to keep myself accountable because one of the things, um, I was talking to my friend about this last year, I was like, oh my God, why can't I do this 100% anymore? Like I used to be able to do it before, like 100% eating clean. And she's like a couple reasons. She's like, one, you're like, your lifestyle is just so different now. You're like flying everywhere all the time. You're like eating out all the time. So it's harder like to keep at it because like there's more temptation to just eat the thing. And secondly, this is the part that got me. She's like, you were documenting it. And I wonder if that was keeping you accountable. And I have really thought hard about this. And I think that's true. I think sharing the journey on YouTube during that time i was documenting my meals my meal prep like you guys i used to post videos of irfan and i meal prepping together like i had hired a mentor a couple of years ago that had me take down all of that content um because she was like you're not making that content anymore so like get rid of it i regret getting rid of it because i think that it just really showcased my journey but i think my friend is on to something because because i was in it and I was showcasing it and I was sharing it, I think it also kept me super accountable. And then when I stopped talking about food and nutrition, like it was easier to slip up because it's like, oh, well, like I'm flying here, you know, uh, you know, I'll just eat this in Dubai and I'll just have this, you know, in Lisbon and I'll have this in Italy and I'll have this in, you know, all the places that we've been going. And it's like, no, like, if you want to look and feel your best, you have to do this 100%. So this is me recommitting myself. I love you. I hope you enjoyed this. Also want to mention that I'll see you guys in two weeks in LA. We're having our uh, Orange County Intensive in LA. We have a couple more seats left. So this is your last call for it. Sign up. I'll put the link in the description box. It's called uh, Feminine Sacred and Savage. I'll see you guys in Orange County. Also, in my members only area this week, I'm going to do a new training. It's going to be live. All my live streams will be there mostly. Uh, maybe I'll do one here or there on this platform, like main platform. But it's going to be on how to use your man's income to diversify your portfolio as a woman. Super excited about that. Love you. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.